Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to create a game and we are going to find out how to find distance using a single camera. So you can see this is my hand and we can detect the distance of your hand from the camera in centimeters using just a single camera. So the game ended. So here you can see it's giving the distance in centimeters. It is quite stable. If I stop, you can see it's accurate up to one uh, two centimeters, but overall it is accurate up to three four centimeters. So it is not very accurate But it is quite good for a lot of different applications. So I can go up to one meter If you press the R it actually resets. So basically the game is that you have to press this uh, Button that where it appears. So here I need to press so here the distance is not enough So it is not getting pressed, but if I go closer It will get pressed and then the location will change and then I, do, uh, I need to press it again. So here after the game ends, you can see it says game over and that is your score. And I can press the R button to reset it. So again, I can go closer and press. And then if I keep pressing, it will not work because I need to go back. I need to press the button and come back. So that's how you can use the distance. So I need to come back. So I need to press enough like that and come back. So that's my score five here and I can reset. So this is what we are going to learn today. Uh, there is a little bit of maths involved, but I will explain how it works. And uh, it's not that complicated. You can do it yourself as well. And we don't have a very long code. It's a few lines of code and we will have this complete game. We will do it step by step. So first thing we will do is how to find the distance of our hand. And then uh, later on, we are going to create this game, a very simple game. It will take a few minutes to actually create. So I'm very excited. Let's go ahead and start uh, building this game. So here we are in our PyCharm project, and you can see that we have named it Hand Distance. So we will go to File, Settings, and we are going to install our packages first. So we will go to Project, Hand Distance, and then the Python interpreter and we have to select. So we will click on add and here we are going to use the existing environment and we will press OK. Now you can see we have Python 3.7. This is what I'm using. Uh, if you face any difficulties in the newer versions, you can come back to Python 3.7. Uh, I'm using Python 3.7.6. So here we are going to add the packages. We will write cvzone. So this package is uh, going to install the computer vision library OpenCV and NumPy. And then we also have to install MediaPy. So these are the two packages that we need. And the rest of them are installed by default. So we will not have to install them separately. So CVZone is done and we will wait for MediaPy. So media pipe is right now installing, downloading and installing. So let's wait for that. Okay, so now media pipe has been installed and we can go ahead and create our project. So we will just need one file. So we'll just call it main and we will write all of the code here. So the first thing we will need are the packages. So we will import, let's say CV2. Uh, then we will need the hand tracking module. So we will import it from CV zone. So we will write CV zone dot hand tracking module import hand detector. So this is the idea. And then we will need the webcam. So we will open up our web webcam. This will be cap is equals to cv2.videocapture and we will put in the value of zero. So I have changed my webcam and I'm going to show you now. You will see it's a very big difference. So we will sh see that shortly. So cap.set, we are going to change the size of it. So we want it to be 1280. So this is prop ID number three, which is width and cap.set prop id number four which is height so we'll put it as 720. so this is the basic idea and then we are going to write our loop so here we will call it loop so while true we are going to read 
success and image is equals to cap dot read and then we are going to display this cv2 dot im show we'll call it image and img and then we will write cv2 dot wait key and we will put one second uh, one millisecond delay so this should give us our webcam image so let me show you how that looks like right click and run so let's wait for it and there you go so you can see now this is the new camera and let me show you the previous one and you will be amazed how much of a difference does that make so i have it attached to number two and there you go so this is the image that was before I was using the Logitech webcam and this is the newer one and wait for it and there you go. Look at the difference. It is insane. Anyways, so moving on, what we are going to do, we are going to first of all detect the hand and then I will explain how exactly are we going to find the distance. So let's write here. Uh, no, before that we need to write it. Um, we need to find the or declare the hand detector so we will write here hand detector so here we will write detector is equals to uh, hand detector and we are going to give the detection confidence as 0 0.8 which means if it's 80 percent sure then detect it as a hand and the max hands we are going to detect as one we don't want multiple hands uh, otherwise it will just confuse the system and here we are going to get the hands and we will get the image back from our detector dot find hands and we will just send in our image so that should give us the hand and it should give us all the points there you go and there you go so you can see uh, the right hand is being detected and it is fine. It is actually my right hand. This is the left hand It is detecting fine. So what exactly do we need to do now? We need to find the distance between this point and this point. So this point and this point. So what are these points? There are numbers for these points. There is an index number. So first of all, let's check if the hand is there. So we will say that if hands if the hand is present then do something so what is that something we are going to get our hands and we will get the first element of it which means the first hand and because we only have one hand it will always be zero here so we don't need to worry about that so hands at zero then within this we have a lot of different things that we can access the thing that we need is the lm list the landmark list so we will write here lm list and that will give us the list of all the points so lm list is equals to this and if we print that out lm list you will see that we will have all these uh, different values so is it on yeah so if i bring in my hand you can see all these different values over here so here you can see this is a list and i believe they have 21 points and what exactly do we need? Uh, which point numbers do we need? You can check it on the MediaPipe website. So here we have the MediaPipe website. And you can see we need point number 5 and point number 17. So these are the two points that we need. And we are going to find the distance between these points. So let's go ahead and find that. So here we can simply say that our first point which is point number five let's call it x1 and y1 and we will write lm list at point number five and the same thing will be here x2 y2 is equals to lm list and we will put in the value of 70 so this will give us these two points now to find the distance the easiest way is to print out the value by saying x1 or let's say x2 minus or which one was first anyways whatever the value is x2 minus x1 and we can do an absolute so we don't get a minus sign so we can write math dot abs and there we go 
Okay, math is not declared. We need to go up and we need to import math. And let's give it a little bit of space. And there you go. So let's run that. Okay, let's remove the LM list because that will be annoying. Uh, let's see what the distance is. So let's open this up. If I bring in my hand and we have an error. So there is no absolute really math dot abs. So it's not in maths, it's just abs. I forgot about that. So let's run that again. Mm, there you go. So now you are looking at the distance. So if I come closer, okay, the camera is here. <laughs> I forgot the placement. So if I come closer, you can see the distance is increasing. If I go backwards, the distance is decreasing. So based on this value, we can uh, estimate how far the object is or how far the hand is in centimeters. We will have to do a little bit of conversion. I will explain how to do that. But the, the problem here is that we are just using X. So if I rotate, you will see the value dramatically changes, which should not be the case because the distance here is not changing. So the value should not change. So what exactly can we do? So this is a problem. So what we can do, okay, it's not closing from here. Let's close it from here. Okay, so right now, let me explain what is happening. So right now, let's say this is my point one and this is my point two. This is point number five. This is point number 17. This is point number five. So right now, we are just checking the X distance. So the distance of the X. But what we need to do is we need to find the diagonal distance here. If we find that instead of just using the x value, then we will consider x and y and this value will always be constant. Even if you rotate it, it is going to be the same. So instead of x, we need to find the diagonal value and we will use that instead. So how can we do this? Let's go ahead and uh, use our equation. It's very simple. Uh, all we have to do is we have to square it and then square uh, take the square root of uh, the values. So basically we will write y2 minus y1 and then we will take the square of it. We will square it and then we will add it to x2 minus x1 and then we will square it again and all of this, we have to take the square root of this. So we will write math, math dot sqrt. And then we will finish the bracket here. So this will give us the distance. Distance is equals to this. And now let's print both of these. So this is before and this is after. So distance and let's... Um, it is, yeah, it is pixels, so we don't have floating values. Okay, so let's run that. And now you will see the previous one and the one right now. Uh, it will be a big difference. Uh, okay, we need to push it in. It should be in the if statement, my bad. And I believe the print as well. Yeah. Okay, so let's run that again. What happened here? Why is everything... In the wrong indentation okay so now it is fine let's run that again okay so let's bring in our hand and you can see the distance is pretty much similar but if I rotate you see the distance at the left changes but the distance on the right does not change so it's it's pretty much similar to what we had before so if I go forward backwards both of them change but the left one does not uh, changes when I rotate. The right one changes a little bit, like it's not a big difference. So this is how you can solve the rotation problem uh, for the distance. Okay, so um, we can change this to integer.
because we don't want floating values. So that's good. Now we have our uh, values for the distance. So how exactly are we going to convert it into actual units uh, for centimeters? So how can we do that? Well, first of all, we need to check what kind of a relationship do we have here. So if I decrease the value, does it decrease consistently? Does it change consistently or is it a little bit different than that? So let's see. So for example, if I'm at 20 and the distance is 10, if I go to 40, that's the distance become 20. Is it linear or not? If it's not linear, oh, I'm not printing. So if it's not linear, then we have to use something else. So the relationship here is actually not linear. So this means that if you keep going back, the difference between the values is not constant. So how do I know that? Well, what I did was I took out the values of X and Y so let me write down here, find function. So basically we need to find a function that can uh, basically relate X and Y. So what is X? X is the value that we are getting from our distance. This is the X. And Y is the value in centimeters. So let me write it down here x is the distance let's say the raw distance and y is the value in centimeters so basically what i did was i put a measuring tape in front of the camera and i put my hand at 20 and then i checked the value it was 300 then i changed it to 25 i moved a little bit back then the value was 245 then I put it at 30, the value was 200. So if you see the difference here, it's not consistent. So here, 300 minus 45 is 55. Here, then the difference is 45. Then the difference is 30. Then the difference is lower and lower and lower and lower. So it's not really consistent. Uh, it's not that the value is always 50. Uh, so 300 will become 250. Uh, 250 then it will become 200, then 150, then uh, 100, and so on. It's not like that. So this is not really a linear relationship. So what can we do? We need to find a polynomial function that actually fits this. But what exactly is a polynomial function? So let's look at it over here. So here you can see, uh, this is a website wikiversity and here they have shown the examples of functions uh, what do you call the polynomial functions and what degrees do they have so here you can see this is the degree zero this is degree one degree two so we need to see what kind of relationship do we need to actually create our function but before we do that we need to plot this graph we don't know what exactly are the values so how does it look like so what we will do is we will go to Canva because it's free to use and we are going to create a graph. So here is my graph and I will put in all the values here and then we will see what does the graph look like. So here we are going to put in our values. So we are going to put the Y values here. So we will write in 20. I know this is the X column, but it doesn't really matter. You can put any numbers that you want. Uh, so here we will put 25 this is 30 now we are putting the y values in the x column because they are consistent and canva doesn't use both uh, plots this is just a string so that's why we are putting it like this so 35 and 40 then 45 50 55 60 65 70 75 80 85, 90, 95, and 100. And then here we will put in our values. So the first one is 300, then 245, then 200, 170, 145, 130. Wait, what did I write? 130. Okay, then we have 112, 103, 112, 103. 
and then we have 93, 87, 80, 75, 70, 67, 62, and 59, and 57. So here we can see that this is our plot. And clearly, it is not a linear graph. So uh, it's not just a single line. So it's not like this. So if you put it like this, it will be very wrong. So you will not get the accurate values at all. So what do we do? We use a polynomial function that will give us this curve value. So we need to fit an equation that will be very similar to this. So we can use the uh, use machine learning for this, but that will be too much because this is simply a second order polynomial function. If you don't know about polynomial functions, you can read it here. This is Wikiversity. So this is a linear function that is the first degree of polynomial function. What we need is the quadratic, which is uh, basically a curve and the curve that changes direction only once. But uh, we are not using three because here the direction is changed twice. So it basically you can tell by the number of bumps. So if you have two bumps, it is three degrees. If you have four bumps, uh, if you have three bumps, it is four degrees and so on. So in this case, we only need two degrees. We can fit in a curve like that. So we need to find the equation for this. And NumPy actually helps us find this. And it's very simple. So let's go ahead and try that out. So there is our code. And these are the values that we have received. So what we are going to do, we are going to write here simply that uh, our coefficients of our equation. So our equation will be something like this. It's a quadratic equation, which means we will have x to the power of 2 plus x and then plus a value c. And then the coefficients will be a and b and c. So this will be our equation y is equals to this. So what we need to do, let me put it as a comment. So what we need to do is we need to find the value of a and the, find the value of b and c. If we can find this, then using this equation, whatever x value we are getting, when we put here, it will give us the value of y, which will be in centimeters. So this is the relationship that we need. So we need to find these coefficients and we can use NumPy. So we can go here and import NumPy as NP. And then we can write here, numpy dot polyfit so polynomial fit the equation uh, with the values of x x and y with second degree uh, polynomial function so second degree if you if you had a different graph and it was changing the direction twice then you will write three if it changes four times uh, then you will write five for example so here the direction is changed one time so we will write two second order polynomial function. So this is basically the idea. I will keep this here in case you want to review this. And once we get this equation, we are only doing this before the while loop because we need to do it only once. Once we have this, then we can use these coefficients and find the value of the x, uh, sorry, y. So here, this is distance. So distance, in centimeters is equals to our coefficients at zero, which is, uh, or let's just do it like this. We will write here, A, B, and C is equals to coefficients. So here we will write A multiplied by, so our equation was this, uh, A multiplied by x to the power of Two. So our x is basically distance. So distance to the power of 2 plus b multiplied by distance and then plus c. So this is distance in centimeters. So let's just print that out. So this will be distance in centimeters and this will be distance. 
So let's run that. And hopefully it will give us the value in centimeters. So there you go. Right now it's saying 60, which is not bad. It's going back. It's around one meters now. When I come closer, you can see that the values are changing. There you go. So now this is not a perfect method and we are just using a single camera. So there is a limit to how much accuracy we can get. And the size of the hand, well, on average, it will be similar, but some people, they have bigger hands, some have smaller. So you can add a little bit of variation. You can add a multiplier there, or you can do it uh, for each one uh, separately, but definitely adding a multiplier will help. So the idea is not to get a very accurate reading from this. So this will not be very accurate compared to a 3D webcam. So what, what we need is just a rough estimate so actually let's keep it there and what we will do is we will print the value of this uh, on our console so not the console on our image so here we can write cv zone dot uh, what is happening i think we didn't import yeah so we need to import cv zone and there you go so cv zone dot put text rect so it will add the rectangle and the text both. So that's why we are using this. We will put image, we put it on the image and then we will write an F string. Here we are going to write the integer in distance centimeters uh, because we don't want the floating values. And then we are going to write dash, uh, not here. What did I do? Here we will write centimeters. And then we have to give in the values for where do you want to place it. So we need the bounding box information of the hand. So here we are going to write bounding box is equals to hands at zero. And then we are going to write bounding box here. So that will give us the bounding box information. Um, or we could just write x, y, width and height. I think that will be easier to work with. So here we can write the X and then the Y. So this is our starting point and we need to write another bracket to end it. So let's run that and see if we get the distance in the right position. So mm, actually I don't want to show all these points so what we can do is we can remove it from here so we can write draw is equals to false and here we are going to remove this image so now it will only display the text but we are going to put the bounding box as well so right now it's showing only the text uh, but we can show the bounding box so where do we want to put it so we can put it at the very end. So let's write it here, cv2 dot rectangle. And we will put in our image and then we will put in the point one, which is x and y, and then the width and the height. So x plus width and y plus height. And then we will put in the color 2550 and 255 which is purple and then the thickness as let's say 3 so let's run that and there you go um the the number should be a little bit higher and let's print it after the rectangle so it doesn't intervene um what we can do is we can put here let's say uh, a little bit of an offset so it doesn't interfere so x plus 5 let's say and y minus 10 let's say so it goes up a little bit and on the side a little bit yeah i think that's fine so you can see now we are getting the value uh, in distance in centimeters again this is not extremely accurate but um, it is accurate to a good point to a few centimeters so about three four centimeters I believe this is accurate and uh, 
it actually works well even if you rotate you can see it doesn't change the distance a lot a little bit yeah but not a lot so what we can do is we can use this method to actually create a game in which we are pressing buttons so if your hand is closed it means you are pressing and you have to press it in the right region to get it as a detection so this is the game that we are going to build so now we are going to create a game out of this and we are going to press buttons so whenever the hand is closed and it is in the right position we will detect it as a hit and then we will store the points so the first thing we will do let's just copy this and paste it and here we are going to write game let's say so this is our game code and what we will do is we will go down and the first thing we will do is to create our button so this button will appear in different places so we will write here draw button and then oh button and then we are going to write cv2 dot circle and we will give in our image and then uh, the location of this point uh, the circle is going to keep changing so we are going to create a variable for it so we will write here game variables and we will write cx and cy so the center of the circle so let's just put any value 250 and 250 this is the initial value and later on whenever we hit the button it will change the location so here we will write cx and cy and then we have to give in the radius let's say it is 30 and then the color let's say it is um, actually the color needs to change as well when we click on it it should change to green and when we don't it should be purple so let's put a variable here as well so let's call it color and because it will be changing so we have to put it in a variable so color is equals to 255 0 and 255 so this will be purple in the beginning and what else so we need to fill it cv2 dot filled and let's try that so it is not displaying why is that if i bring in my hand still doesn't display why is that i am show and everything oh we are running main <laughs> we need to run the game now that's why okay so there you go you can see we have the circle um it's not very interesting so what we can do is we can add a little more layers to it so let's just copy this and we are going to create a line inside of it or let's change the color of it and we'll write 255 255 and 255 let's make it white and this will give it like a target thing yeah if we add one more circle it will look like a target so let's copy that and uh, let's put this at 20 and then let's keep it white and let's change this to let's say two yeah now it's looking better and we can add one more at the end one more we have already copied it so one more at the end same thing but at 30 and let's make it black so 50 50 not very black but uh, kind of a uh, shade of gray there you go so this is our target and if it uh, if we click on it it is going to change to green so this is the idea and it should change the position as well so and if we are close and if we keep moving this it should not work whenever we press it should work so that is the idea behind this project okay so this is good then uh, we need to add the display for the game so uh, I believe it's called head up display or something so we can write here game head up display so what exactly are we going to put here we are going to put here the time and the number of points that we have so here we will write CV zone 
dot put text rect and we are going to put it on our image and then we are going to put in time so let's just put any value for now let's say it is uh, 30 seconds so we can write here time is 30 seconds and then uh, we will give in a location so 1100 and let's say 75 and we will increase the scale scale to 5 so let's run that there you go oh that's too big um, let's make it um, 1000 and let's decrease the scale to 3 hopefully this will be better yeah now it's better and we can also give it an offset offset oh what did I do offset is equals to let's say 10 so it will add some pixels on the top and the bottom uh, not enough let's put 20 and yeah now you can see there's a little bit of offset around it so that's good so next thing uh, it's pretty much the same we are going to add the points so for the points let's just change the location and let's make it 100 instead of 1000 and here we are going to say we have points points is equals to or let's say score score is equals to uh, 30 and let's put four it's basically how many buttons did you press so that will be our yeah score is four time is ten this is a little bit a little bit more than this one so let's re decrease this to let's say 60 yeah so that's better okay so that is good and uh, now what we need to do is we need to add the logic so first of all we need to check if we we clicked so how can we check that we will check the distance so we will say here that if actually let's just put it before the drawing if our distance in centimeters is let's say less than 40 so if it's less than 40 centimeters we will declare it as a click so we will write here print click or let's change the color the color is equals to green 0 2 5 5 and 0 so this will give us the color change so our button will change the color so if I move in there you go it becomes green if I move back it doesn't change <laughs> because we didn't tell it to change if the color if it goes back because we need to write an else uh, when that happens but again the concept is working if it's less than 40 this will happen but we don't want it to be anywhere when the hand goes in front it should go in front and click on the exact same spot we where we have the circle not anywhere else so how can we do that so right now what we have is we have the CX location of our uh, circle and we have the X and Y location of our bounding box. So th these are the parameters that we have. So we need to check uh, if our CX, our circle is basically in between X and X plus width. So if it's in between that, then it will uh, detect it as a hit. And the same thing we have to do for the Y. So we will write here, CY is, should be in between Y and uh, what do you call Y plus width. Y plus width. So uh, Y plus height. So if you did not understand that, let me just draw it here and hopefully that will be better. So let's say that this is our hand and then this is our CX and CY. So this is our button and this here is our rectangle. 
or the hand. So our X and Y are here and our X plus width plus width is here and Y plus height is here. So this is the point. So this is X and Y. So we need to check that if this, let's say this point X and Y, here the X is let's say 10 and here X plus width let's say is 50. So if this point is let's say 30, it means it's inside the box. And then for the same thing for the Y, we need to check if it's in between these two region. So let's say the Y here is 20 and the Y here is 100. So if this value is right now it's in between, so let's say it is 30. So then it means it is detected inside. So we are basically checking this. If that is the case, then we are going to detect it as a hit. So we can change the color. Uh, we should not have removed that. So we can write here color is equals to green, uh, 0, 2, 5, 5, and 0. If that is not the case, then we can write else color is equals to 2, 5, 5, 0, and 2, 5, 5. So it will become purple. There you go. And let's test it out. So if I push in, there you go, it's green. If I go back, wait, why didn't it return? What happened there? If this is the case, then the color is this, else the color is this. Oh, sorry, it should be else here. My bad. Else for the distance, not for this. So, there you go, green. If I go back, it becomes purple. Green, purple. Hit, no hit. So, whenever we hit, what we want to do, we want to change the color so that the person knows that uh, you hit it. And then, uh, for a few iterations for like one or two iteration we want to keep the color same so that the person can see if we change the color and change the position at the same time the person will not be able to see so we need to delay a little bit and then we change the location but if you delay using time everything will freeze so we don't want that what we want to do is we want to use counter to actually count how many frames have passed by and then based on that we can change the color so here, instead of changing these colors, we will remove all of this and we will say that if this is the case, counter is equals to one. It means start the counter. So we will go up here in the game variable, we will write counter is equals to zero. In the beginning, counter is zero. If uh, it has detected a hit, counter will become one. And here we are going to write, if counter is one, or if counter has a value other than zero or false, then we are going to do something. First of all, we will do counter plus equals one, and then we will check, uh, then we will change the color to green, counter uh, color is equals to zero, two, five, five, and zero. And then we are going to check if counter is equals to, let's say uh, initial value will be one, then it will become two and then at three we will change it. So for two frames, the color will be green and then it will change to purple. Uh, this will be enough for us to see. So if counter is equals to three, then we are going to change the color back um, to let's say purple. So color is equals to two, two, five, five, zero, two, five, five. So let's run that. Uh, and we need to put the counter back to zero. There you go. So if we do that now, if we go close, it becomes green. If we go back, it becomes purple. It's the same thing. And that is good. So now what we need to do is we need to change the location as well. So the location of this uh, circle, this circle. So we just need to change CX and CY. And we can give it some random numbers. So we can write here CX is equals to uh, random dot rand integer. 
and we will give in the value from let's say 100 to 1000 or let's say 11,000 1100 and the same thing we will do for the y so we will write here cy and we will put in 100 and let's say 600 so 720 is the max so we'll put it at and yeah that should be good so let's check that out so if i click on it boom it changes location if i go down and i press on it changes location so you can see it tells us when it is green so if i don't do that if i put the counter as let's say if counter is equals to one then we will not be able to see Okay, uh, my new camera actually is tilted, so it's hard for me to do that. So I'm going to change the camera to two for testing. And later on, we can try it again with that. So here, if I put it at green, now you can see this is very good. Because if I keep pressing, it will not go to the next one. And that is what it should be. I need to press and go back. When I go back, then it should change the position. Why is it not going back? Okay, something is wrong. What is happening? Uh, counter is equals to two. Okay, so here it changes. There you go, it changes. And if I keep it forward, it will not work properly. There you go. It is changing the positions, but again, it is not working properly. It is not showing us the green light that we want. And uh, it is not changing the location when it's forward. See here, now it is correct because if I have my hand forward, it should not go to the next one. When I go back, it should go to the next one. See? So what I need to do, I need to press. So let me flip the screen because it's annoying. Um, here we can write image is equals to cv2 dot uh, flip image and we will give the axis one. So it will flip in the x axis instead of the y. So now it should be easy for me to <laughs> play this game. Let's see. So here we have that, there you go. Press, 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 there you go. So if I don't go back, it will not detect it. So if I put it forward and I keep it forward, then it will not detect it. You have to go back to reset it. Because otherwise you will keep your hand like this and you will just go doing this and it, you will win the game. So it's not really pressing a button. It's just sweeping on the floor. So yeah, now the last thing we need to do, we need to add points. So here we will write points uh, plus equals one and or let's call it score. Score plus equals one. And at the top, we are going to write score is equals to zero. And at the bottom, we are going to change here. Uh, we will make it an F string. And here we are going to put in the value of a score. And uh, sometimes this value, uh, it will be, it will be one, two, three. So it's one digit. We always want it to be two digits. So we can convert it into integer, uh, sorry, string, string. And then we can write dot Z fill dot z fill why is it not working okay because here is a bracket this should be okay dot z fill and we will put in the value of two so we always want two digit digits so if it's one it will put zero one if it's two it will put zero two so let's try that out so if i push yeah there you go one two there you go. I need to go back, go back, go back. There you go. So I have four points. Now the time, it's not changing. So we need to fix that. So 
So let's go ahead and check out the time. So here we are going to write time start is equals to time dot time. Did we import time? We don't need to. Okay. Uh, no, we do need to. I forgot. Import time. So time dot time, this is the initial time that we have. And then what we will do is that we will say that uh, maybe here we will say that if time dot time minus my initial time uh, time dot start is less than let's say total time then we will play otherwise we will stop so total time is equals to let's say 20 seconds so the game will be played for 20 seconds so we will put all of this in the if statement except yeah except I am show and then else we will do something else so we can we can pass for now but later on we can add something if we wanted to so and we need to show the final time, the remaining time. So the remaining time will be, uh, the remaining time will be uh, total time, total time minus the time dot time. So this will be our and we can change it to integer so that we don't have decimal places. So let's run that. So what is happening there? Oh, sorry, I forgot to add a start time. So time dot time minus start time uh, starts uh, time start and that should be fine okay, let's just push it down so you can see let's just push this a little bit here and let's run it again there you go 17 16 15 14 this is our timer so now that we have the time, the last thing we need to do, we need to show game over and the points that you have earned after the game is over. So what we can do is we can put this uh, text rect and here we are going to first of all write game over. Game over and it doesn't need to be an F string. Then uh, we can put it at 400 and 400 we will give the scale of 5 and the offset as let's say 30 and the thickness as let's say 7 so let's run that and actually let's put the game time to be 2 seconds so that it quickly goes there we don't have to wait for it to go to the next screen so there you go game over and that's pretty good um, and then we are going to go back and here we are going to copy this and we are going to push it down a little bit and write our points so this will be an F string and we will write here your points are basically a string so we will write here that we have points or let's call it score actually I'm confusing between score and points score so score we have to convert it into something right now what is the score yeah actually we can just put it here and yeah that should be fine and then we can give in the value of let's say or 25 and then 500 
and do we need to change anything else uh, yeah let's change the scale to 3 and the offset to 20 the thickness we will keep it by default yeah better so we need to push it a little bit further so that uh, it can display or we can write here your score and hopefully it will center nah, kind of we can push it a little bit forward so let's say 50 yeah that's fine and the last thing we can do is um, we can add the button of resetting so here we will store this value as key key is equals to this and then we will write if key is equals to ORD, let's say R, if you press the R button on the keyboard, then we need to reset the game. So if that is the case, we will say time dot st uh, time start is equals to time dot time. And then we will say that our score score is equals to zero and yeah that's pretty much it and we can also write that information here we can write press r to restart and we can write here this at 460 a little bit forward this 475 this as 2 and this as this does not need to be an F3. Yeah, press R to restart. So if I press the R button, you can see it starts again and then game over again. Again, there you go. So this is good. And what else do we need? Yeah, just we will replace the time to let's say 20 seconds. And now we can actually play this game. So let's see how much I score. So there you go, I will press the buttons as we go along. Uh, again, you have to go back, otherwise it will not detect it as a hit. You have to press the button quickly. There you go, oh, there you go. Push, yo, my score was 12. So I can press the R button and it will reset. So I, I can play it again. And that's how we can make this game. So actually, let's try it with the better camera as well. So how does it work? Uh, I think I can do better this time. Where is it? Oh, <laughs> couldn't see it. Mm. Oh, yes, I did 16. So let's try it with the better camera. Let's go down here because it's not centered. That's why it's a little bit harder to play. I will, I will move, try to center from here. And let's see. So... If I click there, here, so this is the issue because I have to see a little bit tilted. There you go. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it is hard to play like this. Yeah, I can only score six. Um, let's try one more time, hopefully. Let me put it a little bit straight. I will move the oh, mic. And let's try now. There you go. There you go. No. And no, it's on the mic. It's hard to do that. Anyway, so I'm hoping that you got the idea. And it is fun to play. And if you add music and other elements to it, animation as well, it will be much, much better. So all of this we are going to teach in our... Uh, game development course that will be released very soon so if you haven't checked it out check it in the description section below and if it seems interesting to you go ahead and enroll and i will see you in that course so hopefully this video was fun for you i hope you have learned something new if you did subscribe share it with your friends like the video 
and uh, i will see you in the next one